Can you do it? Here. Here. Alright guys, um, so hello everyone, I'm Zalzwan, I'll be educating this round alone apparently. Uh, on government team, we have Sri KDU Sun Bears, <laughs> and on opposition team, we have Titans too. Uh, congratulations to both teams for making it thus far. Without further ado, uh, now on the motion that, uh, the motion of this house supports vigilante justice, I would like to welcome the, gov the government's first speaker, the Prime Minister, to uh, start the government's discussion. Did the guy just now tell you to press anything? Uh, no. All right. All right. Should already be running. Yeah, okay. Thank you. In the society that we have today, there are many places and countries in the world where there is a lack of law enforcement that is either fair, law enforcement that is effective, law enforcement that is fast, or law enforcement that enforces laws that are um, properly, uh, that are laws that are actually good. We think that in these cases where there is a lack of law enforcement or a lack of an effective justice system, we think it's completely justified for members of the public to step in as vigilantes and fill this void. We think that there is a necessity, we think that the role of enforcing laws and ensuring that society maintains orderly and that people are punished for crimes that they commit is a role that must be filled. And we think that when this role is not fulfilled by the government, as the government has failed its people in doing this, we think that it's completely fair and justified for vigilantes to do so. Before I begin my uh, main points of uh, my speech today, I'd like to just begin by defining vigilantes. We think that there's a difference between vigilantes and criminals, um, despite both being like not actually, both, despite both working outside the laws. We think that vigilantes actually work against criminals and vigilantes are the ones punishing criminals, not necessarily committing the crimes themselves. We think that this is an important distinction because vigilantes are not, say, committing murder or stealing things like randomly and only justifying it through like their morality or something. We think vigilantes actually punish people who, um, who harm other members of society. And we think that vigilantes um, have good intentions, even if uh, at the end of the day, their actions are not that good. Um, we think that so let me just start by defining the kind of situations where vigilantes will step in. Firstly, a situation where there is no effective law enforcement or there are basically no police. So this will happen in states or areas with no actual effective police force. Say, for example, in Venezuela, where there, the police are on strike and there's no effective police force because they are not being paid. We think that in situations like this, we think it's completely fair for vigilantes to step in as they are doing so in self-defense of the community against criminals who would otherwise go unprosecuted unpunished and there will be no deterrence against criminals committing crimes since there is no police to punish them. We think that it's completely fair for our vigilantes to step in in these cases. Secondly, in situations where there is an effective law enforcement, however, the law enforcement is sometimes not fair or they're enforcing laws that do not make sense. Say for example, um, uh, say for example in the USA where the law enforcement agencies and police there have been accused of being biased against African Americans or for example in India where police refuse to persecute rape cases and refuse to um, actually hunt down rapists. We think that in situations where there is law enforcement, but they are lacking in some ways, uh, we think that it's fair for vigilantes to step in here as well, because we think that vigilantes, when a vigilante actually, when a member of society actually becomes so angry and so fed up with the current situation that is happening, that they actually become a vigilante and go out and fight criminals themselves and risk themselves and their families in doing so. We think that at that point, we think that um, the police have really failed to the point where there is no safety in society anymore. We think that this will not happen like just willy-nilly. We don't think it's so easy to be a vigilante. We don't think anyone will just go out into the streets and start hitting people with sticks. We think that being a vigilante means acknowledging that you will most likely come under the risk of bodily harm. We think that this deters many people from becoming vigilantes. So we think at the end of the day, the people who become vigilantes only do so in extreme cases or do so when they believe that their rights are seriously under threat and when they believe 
that there is a serious danger present to them and other members of society. We think that in these situations, vigilantes are here to step in to defend the community against criminals and prevent criminals from further committing crimes. Before I move on, yes. What gives them the right to decide whether it is too, too wrong to stop them? We think that uh, vigilantes, what a vigilante decides is wrong or right is completely subjective to that vigilante themselves and is subjective mostly to the members of community themselves. However, we don't think this means that um, vigilantes will like, say for example, like beat up, um, beat up people for committing crimes like minor infractions, like, oh, you cross the street, now I'm going to hang you. We think that, uh, we think that generally if vigilantes do something that is considered too wrong by the members of their community, these vigilantes themselves will be persecuted by other members of the community because other members of the community will go, um, will act like in shock or um, will obviously not condone the actions of these vigilantes. We think that in cases where vigilantes act with, dispro act with disproportionate force or in cases where vigilantes um, like, um, like persecute people for crimes that aren't actually that uh, crimes that aren't actually that serious, we think that members of their own community will persecute them as well um, for being um, criminals themselves. We think that that's the distinction between vigilantes and criminals. We think that uh, we don't. Ne it's not necessarily our burden to endorse every um, action or every crime that vigilantes persecute, but rather we endorse what the vigilantes fight for. And what the vigilantes fight for is a fairer justice system and and a protection of their own communities. We think that um, vigil. Uh, we think that when vigilantes um, step in, uh, and this moving on to my next point, we think that when vigilantes um, step into a, um, step in as law enforcement in a community or in a country, we think that that sends a message to the people who run the country and to the rest of the country that there's something seriously wrong with that, um, with the law enforcement and with the with the police system in that country. We think the message that it sends is that the, either the law enforcement or the justice system is not doing its job correctly and that it needs to change. We think that this encourages change in the justice system while also in the short term protecting people from criminals. We think that while in the short term it protects people from criminals, in the long term we think that it actually encourages change. Say for example in India, um, again with the cases where we had, uh, where there were a group of concerned women who um, were so fed up with um, the police not prosecuting rapists, they formed their own protection squads um, who pursued rapists using broomsticks. We think that um, after that happened, it showed to the rest of India that there was a serious rape problem, and it showed to the rest of India that this rape problem was not going to be accepted by the rest of the community. We think that this push for change faster inside um, India's courts, and now there are more laws in India against rape and that punish rape and actually give the police power to pursue rapists. We think that in this way, vigilantes can push for change better because vigilantes actually highlight a societal problem. We think that when one vigilante starts fighting against injustice, other vigilantes too join them. This shows the power of the people um, who support a certain movement or who support a change in laws or a change in law enforcement. We think that because of this, vigilantes are ultimately a force of good, even if sometimes the actions are not necessarily good in themselves. We think that even if um, that were the case, we think at the, at, at the end of the day, in the long run, at the very least, vigilantes spark discussion, vigilantes spark discourse, and in the short term, vigilantes protect people. We think that side opposition does not have this when side opposition does not support vigilantism and does not support people taking their own safety into their own hands. We think that if you as a member of the community feel completely under threat and feel that your safety is at threat every day and that law enforcement is not doing anything to stop it, we think that it's completely justified for you to take the law into your own hands and to pursue change and is to pursue the greater good and protect other people. At the end of the day, vigilantes are a force with side by side government. Right, I would like to thank the Prime Minister for his speech. Now I'd like to invite the leader of opposition to start the case of opposition side. As the opposition team, we believe that the end does not justify the means, and thus we wholeheartedly oppose this motion. Ladies and gentlemen, in opposition, we have three points to make. First, about how an eye for an eye makes the world blind. Second, about how the trust and government works here. And third, about how fear would be instilled in society. But before I proceed with any of my points, allow me to rebut the government points. First, he talks about how there's a lack of law enforcement that are effective and how public members should be allowed to be vigilant when 
justice is not served. Then what's the point of government? And what's the point of electing a government? What's the point of going through all the elections, all the troubles of setting up courts, hiring police, which I will also further elaborate on my second point. And you talk about how there's a difference between vigilant and criminals. But where do you draw the line? Where do you exactly know? What does the vigilant do that is criminal? Uh, that is considered as a crime. What does the criminals do that is not considered as a crime? And you talk about how there's no effective police forces in places like Venezuela, but it's worse than the status quo, and you're only assuming in certain plus places. What about the first world society where there's adequate uh, security? And you talk about how it deters many people from being a vigilant. But what's to stop them from beating up somebody on the street when they're being annoyed by a little small petty stuff. And you said it's completely subjective. Exactly. So where do you draw the line? And you talk about how they would be pursued by other members in the community if they do something wrong. But an eye for an eye makes the world blind. Then what's the difference? And you talk about how it protects people so people don't live in constant fear. But no, imagine you live in a world where people can do anything, where you go on the street and you can get beat up at a time or maybe get murdered at a time. Then you would be living in a community with constant fear, which I would then elaborate on my third point. So the opposition team's first and primary point is about how an eye for an eye makes the world blind. So it essentially damaged the law system because who's the criminal now? Now the cops have to hunt for these vigilants too. You give extra troubles to them instead of actually them focusing on hunting down the no thank you and when the vigilance you you don't teach the wrongdoers a lesson by simply going up there and doing whatever you want because there's occupation doing this job for example police they go through vigorous trainings to be to be considered as police, but now these people can just go on the street to kill somebody or beat someone up. Is that the value you want to teach the society? So now anyone can go on the streets and, oh, I'm the doctor, I'm the nurse, I'm the whatever, I'm the firefighter, and obstruct what other people are doing, which is a matter of life and death. Moving on to my second point about how there's the trust in government. As I said, you vote it, you go through all the troubles of election, where people spend a whole day. And then now you said, oh, anyone can go up there and be anything they want. And you're wasting the taxpayers' money to build jails, to build courts, to hire police, to hire prosecutors, to hire judges. And it's making the worse something worse than the status quo because you're fixing a problem that doesn't exist. So now the suspect, actually, if you do go through the proper procedure, the suspect should be going to trials in court. And but and what if the vigilant served the justice to the wrong person? So now the family of the victim wants to kill the vigilant? Is that the world you want, where you can kill whenever you feel like it? And as I mentioned, no one can determine it. Who's to be there to determine what's the line? What's the line not to cross? So now the government has to reenact a law for all these, go to other parliament, waste of efforts and funds, which can be go to elsewhere. So now, let me ask you, if the government supports this, do they have to pay for the hospital bills when vigilants are injured, when vigilants are this and that? Going to my third point about how fear would be instilled in society, citizens wouldn't dare to come out the streets because they, are, they fear that they can be killed and, or beat up at a time. And a nation would be going into a chaos, be erupting into a chaos because everywhere you go, they are worried. Is this a society that we really want where people live in constant fear? And now, when we do this, we're actually ruining the peace that they're having. And people will stop blaming the government that they're not fulfilling their job to protect the nation. Yes. Um, what would happen in situations where there's no effective government? Why should the people listen to the government just because of there? There are many situations where the government is either ineffective or doesn't create laws that are good. But how do you think that, um, how are you sure that vigilance would be effective? What if? the vigilants go serve their justice and then they get killed in the process. This would be creating more troubles for us. And okay, even if they did, or even if they did manage to serve the wrongdoers a lesson, how, how is that not a crime? Because you're killing them also. Ladies and gentlemen, as leader of opposition, I've never been proud to oppose this motion. Thank you.
right? Uh, I'd like to thank the leader of opposition for the start of opposition's case. Now let me invite the deputy prime minister to continue on with the government's case. Thank you. On side proposition, we agree with side opposition, where we see that at the end of the day, law enforcement is the end goal, where that is the ideal situation. However, we recognize that there are countries, there are situations that people are placed in where the law enforcement is not effective, where the law enforcement does not support them, where the law enforcement actually takes advantage of them, goes against them, goes against their wills. For example, like the example given by my speaker just now, where he mentioned in India, where they did not have laws that actively went against rapists in India. So therefore, vigilantes arose in order to combat those rapists, right? We see that in those situations, vigilantes are necessary because as mentioned by my previous speaker, change needs to happen, right? But when side opposition tells us that they do not want vigilante justice simply because it's too troublesome, simply because where do we draw the line? We see that that is no excuse, right? So before I continue rebuttals. So first of all, they told us that where do we draw the line, right? But the thing about that is that vigilantes often act in groups and vigilantes can only work if they have the support of the community. If one person in the community who is a vigilante says, oh, I don't like um, subject ABC, but no one agrees with him, then obviously he's not going to do that. Obviously, if he does perform that action, then the community is going to turn against him and therefore he won't be an effective, but he or she will not be an effective vigilante, right? Second of all, they've told us that an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But if that's the case, why not just get rid of the justice system as a whole? If your whole point is to not to make the whole world blind, then we might as well not have law enforcement. Because with law enforcement, you're punishing people for the crimes that they did wrong, right? Get rid of law enforcement then. Another thing, they've told us that it is wasting taxpayer money with vigilante justice, for example, courts and cells. But we've told you that it is necessary to have vigilante justice because of ineffective law enforcement. Because of law enforcement, for example, in Nigeria, where in the Borno state, which is the northeastern state, they do not take action because Boko Haram, a terrorist group, exists there. Because they are so lazy and they're so scared to defend their people that the government has essentially seceded their role as the protector of the people. And therefore, the people deserve the right to be able to protect themselves, right? And another thing they've told us is that um, what if these vigilantes get killed in the process? Do we pay for the hospital bills? Do we pay for their cremation, right? But we see that the thing with that is that it is a risk that these vigilantes are willing to take. As mentioned by my speaker just now, he told you that vigilantes only arise in dire situations where the rights of the people are being treaded on, where the rights of the people are being torn apart, right? And so therefore, it is a risk that they're willing to take. It is an informed choice that they've made before they signed up for the job, before they chose to defend themselves, before they chose to defend the people, yes. Talk about, you mentioned about how there are countries or situations that this law enforcement are not effective. But what about developing countries? What about first world society? You're only zooming in on a small area of the world. We see that as what side opposition is very good at doing is ignoring my first speaker, right? They've essentially ignored his speech where he's talked about how even in perfect societies, we still, there is no perfect society, first of all, but we still need to create this discourse because when this just the mere presence of vigilante justice draws attention to the flaws in the law enforcement system. Because even in the US where it is seen as the leader of the free world, right? We see that there are still problems within the justice system where there is prejudices against black people, where there are prejudices against Hispanics, right? And so we see that when the vigilante justice exists, it draws attention to these problems. It tells people that change needs to happen because of um, the action that is taken and therefore change is enacted because it draws attention to the system. And as I said just now, law enforcement is the end goal. We want law enforcement, but because law enforcement is ineffective, therefore we need to create change through vigilantism, right? Because we believe that vigilantism is able to create effective change. Now onto my points. So um, on, how, on how change is taken, which is led on from my rebuttals. I just took one piece. Um, so we see that when vigilantism exists, right? We see that, it, as mentioned by my previous speaker, it draws attention towards problems in society. And we see that because the government does not always make the right decisions. For example, in the 1700s, where the US actually made it legal to have slaves, to own slaves, for example, right? We see that that is a problem that needs to be solved. 
there is a reason why people need to solve these problems. And we see that when vigilantes are able to go out there and voice their opinions by taking action, we see that that is not so wrong. We see that there is not necessarily any difference between vig vigilantes and um, activists, whereas activists just push for reform and it may take decades, it may take centuries, right? But we see that with vigilant vigilantes, it draws immediate attention to these problems. It tells people that, hey, this is an urgent problem. This needs to be solved immediately because this problem is harming us, because this problem has harms on our society, and therefore we need to change this problem, right? We see that through activism, what happens is that you have years and years, or at, at least months, of talking about a problem which might not eventually be solved. Take gun rights, for example, in the US, right? Where we have been talking about defending, where we have been talking about how guns are taking away people's lives through mass shootings, right? We are talking about gun reform. But the thing with that is that because the government does not recognize this as a problem, because the government even supports like not having these reforms, therefore people are dying. And therefore vigilantes we believe should be able to rise because of the amount of people that are dying. Because the government has therefore forfeited their role as a protector of the people. Before I continue on APYs. Let's talk about how there's no reform society, but how are you how do you ensure that these vigilants would per, would perfect the society instead of bring more fear to the citizens? We see that as I mentioned just now, right? Vigilantes often act together with the citizens because when vigilantes act, as I mentioned just now, the vigilantes often have to have the support of the citizens. If the vigilantes do not have the support of the citizens, then they'll be taken, then they'll be overthrown, then they'll be taken down, then they will not be supported. The, they, the community will turn against them. So therefore the vigilante would not work. And therefore we believe that because vigilantes actively work for the rights of the people, no matter the means, we see that at the end of the day, they do get the job done. At the end of the day, they are the ones that help the people. At the end of the day, especially in societies where the law enforcement system is ineffective, is not efficient at all, we see that it is more important to have vigilantes who are able to step in. And even when, in, and we said, we told you that, even in societies where vigilantes are in um, support systems that the community does not support, we see that therefore the community would not support them and therefore the vigilante would cease to be a vigilante. And we've told you where we draw the line between a vigilante and a criminal, where a vigilante is in support of the rights of the people, whereas a criminal actively works against people, actively works to harm people. So therefore, I have never been proud to propose. Thank you. Thank you, the Deputy Prime Minister. Now I'd like to invite the Deputy Leader of Opposition to continue on with opposition discourse. Thank you. Good morning, members of the floor. Today, as the opposition, I'm very proud to oppose this entire idea. My first, my points will be about how it infringes on the sanctity of human life how in the long run, this is not healthy, not sustainable, and how murder is never the answer. However, before I move on to those points, I would first like to make some rebuttals. Firstly, I think the government has uh, mixed up the idea of activism and vigilantism. Vigilantism is when someone takes the law into their own hands because they believe that they this person should be punished based on their own values, based on their own laws. The problem with this is that while law and law, the law holds, you say the the government said that the law is the end goal. But with vin, vigilantism, the problem is that it not only discourages the following of the law, it also encourages more vigilantes to grow up. That's that's completely contradicting the law enforcement that is the key. If one one believed that the law was wrong, then you should encourage the law to change, not take the law into your own hands. They stated that um, it draws attention to the flaws in the legal system, but what you do then is activism. When you want to draw attention to the flaws, you tell them about it, you, you, you bring attention to this particular flaw and you encourage the law system to change it. You don't punish people, yes. In the example of the US where there has been um, outbreak after outbreak of E. coli, where change has been asked over and over again, and it's been decades since that change has been asked for, 
why is it why would you still then not support vigilante justice? How would vigilante justice change something as 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 hard as that to change in the law system itself? Why would someone telling why would someone taking the law into their own hands be a change for this entire motion? Firstly, my first point, it infringes on the sanctity of human life. The difference between the law and vigilante justice is that at least the law has a code of conduct. At least the law, if un if unfollowed, the the people that go the people will have a punishment, as in people in authority, if not following the law, will be punished. The difference with this is that vigilantes say vigilantes have the preconceived notion that they have the right to believe have the right to tell which person deserves to live and which person deserves to die depending on whether or not they think that that person has done a hard a bad enough crime vigilantes are only one step away from becoming actual villains because no one has the right to take human lives into your own hands and to murder at because you believe that it's the right thing to do secondly in the long run this is dangerous for our entire society because because they have they do not have a code of conduct they will not only take revenge on the people that they've done wrong against they've they've they believe have done wrong against them which in a, in order to justify themselves which is a slippery slope because eventually you have people performing the tiniest bit of offenses against the vigilante itself and them getting the wrath of the vigilante. Eventually, civilians would be not only frightened, but also live in fear of the vigilantes themselves, despite the, the vigilante um, pretending to care about the right of the citizens. The, the, opposite, the government has also stated that vigilantes would not be a vigilante if they did not have the, the 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 support of the citizens but vigilantes do not care whether they have the support of the citizens vigilantes make their own laws nextly um the government has also stated that vigilantes does not vigilantes help and encourage the end goal of a good law but my next point will destroy that. Vigilantism is about fixing something that is not necessarily broken. They stated that our justice system is flawed. Well, that might be true. The vigilante justice will make our world become a place where instead of being respected, our justice system will not only be um, embarrassed, the, everyone will not be held accountable for their mistakes and no one will believe in our law anymore no one will believe in our government which cannot come to the end goal of a good law system instead of improving it instead of the vigilantes trying to improve it they make up their own laws they they have a negative impact on society as well as civilians bringing the the entire of the society into chaos because as you know strength incites challenge vigilante when challenge when when people that are bad are challenged by vigilantes they incite conflict by more bad people which incites catastrophe this us as the opposition are very proud to oppose this motion as we believe that vigilantism does not does not lead to a better world. In fact, it leads to a worse one. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say thanks to the Deputy Leader of Opposition. I would like to invite the government whip to continue on the government's case here. Sir, opposition's case is ultimately built, found, built up upon three foundations, right? First, they talk about how vigilantes are ultimately illegal and they break the law. Secondly, they talk about how vigilantes instill fear. And third, they um, paint a picture where governments and the police force are entirely perfect. Three of which we believe are high entirely comfortable cases. And as my job as with, we'll reconstruct all three cases. First off, 
on the point of vigilantes performing actions which might be against law or might be in cases illegal, right? As my first speaker has already said, if you guys had not understood yet, this entire mechanism is based upon the fact that vigilantes operate amongst the support of um, society, right? Without the support of society, with support society condemning them for doing actions which they believe are not good or are illegal in some cases, we believe that's the ultimate um, incentive or the deterrence for these vigilantes to ever perform these Ill illegal actions in the first place. Furthermore, my first speaker has already made a clear distinction between criminals and um, vigilantes, right? If these vigilantes go around the streets and start beating up innocent people to stake, that's what he's ultimately described or characterized as a criminal, criminal, and is not a vigilante, and ultimately defeats the purpose of this motion. Secondly, um, like at, for, at the very least, if law enforcement is not able to catch this vigilante, it at the very least highlights how bad law enforcement are, as my second speaker has already told you. If vigilantes are in fact able to oppose these um, governments, that's picture you paint so badly, that somehow society will immediately just choose to follow vigilantes and ultimately embarrass um, law enforcement as a whole, that shows how bad law enforcement are entirely. It shows that civilians and societies and society does not believe in law enforcement nowadays, and it shows, and this is an incentive for governments to spark change inside law enforcement, right? When you bring up the code of conduct, that's exactly the problem we have in countries today. Like my first and second speaker has already said, in third world countries, there are no governments, there are no law enforcement in place in the first place, right? Because whatever government, whatever law enforcement you're painting your picture, does not exist in these countries. Fine, that may be the third world country, and that may be a very small picture. Let, but let's look at the bigger picture, right? When you ask us to target the ethnic view, why developed countries still have flawed governments, still have flawed um, law enforcement, I shall iterate it to you in my speech now. In developed countries, the problem in developed countries nowadays, especially in the USA, as my um, previous two speakers already told you, the USA is notoriously known for having law enforcement who are known to be biased against actually black people, for instance, who are known to be biased against a certain class. The problem with this allows for an excuse for law enforcement to beat up people they choose from wherever they like. That is the problem with uh, law enforcement nowadays in developed countries. So as such, we believe vigilantes are justified in those societies, as my first speaker has already said, because vigilantes step in, they spark change, they help people, they, they help people who known who have known have been grown up known who untrust their their law enforcement, do not trust um, the people who are meant to save them, and instead, these vigilantes shall be able to take their place. At the very least, even in the short-term scenario, even if worse comes to worse, at least these vigilantes are a hope, are a chance of hope for these people, and we believe vigilantes can still help spark change in the long run. Now, thirdly, when they talk about how the vigilantes might instill fear in the society and how catastrophe will somehow happen under vigilantes' justice, first off, we back to pardon and we don't entirely understand the point. Like, if we, like our first speaker has already explained to you, vigilantes are born in the midst of fear. They either be, may that be fear against the government or the fear against the police force, or just fear against criminals on the loose, right? We believe vigilantes are ultimately born by fear, and the, the entire incentive, the entire reasoning behind being a vigilante is that they do want to combat fear, right? Whatever fear that's purging society now, it's the incentive for these people to become vigilantes in the first place. So the fact that you say that vigilant, vigilantes will instill fear inside people, we don't believe stands entirely. Same for the fact that vigilantes work against fear, and we believe they are known, they are subject, they, are, they have been exposed to what fear is, and thus will combat against it. Fine, even look at our worst case if these vigilantes do instill fear. My first speaker actually brought them their mechanism, right? If they are dealing with fear, and they go to the point where society ultimately condemns them and starts to fear these vigilantes, we believe it's the ultimate incentive for us vigilante to not operate anymore, simply for the fact that he's fighting for no one except for himself. We don't believe that, we believe when a vigilante comes to the point where he's ultimately not supported by anyone and it's ultimately going against the law, it's the point where this vigilante becomes a criminal and it's ultimately allowed for legal action whatsoever. Now, um, lastly, so the, we believe set opposition, the reason for side opposition is fear layer is they fail to understand the motion entirely, right? The motion clearly states that this does not support vigilante justice, not vigilantes by itself. This means that we on site government, the only our burden on site government today is to prove to you why the justice, why reasoning, why the reasonings behind vigilantes are justified and not why vigilantes itself is justified. You see, the point, with this motion, with this point, with this statement, the point of coming from site um the second speaker or site opposition is the fact that now do we have to support vigilantes as a whole by paying for the hospital bills whatsoever does not stand anymore. Simply for the fact that we are here not to support 
the vigilantes himself. So if the vigilantes get into trouble, but they or himself are injured, I believe that's a trade-off you're willing to take, and that's the trade-off they took, and that's the um, that's the risk they um, considered to them, considered themselves. But when you become a vigilante, you should um, be expected to should be expected to at least take some body damage, and we believe on that it's not the responsibility of the government to help and correct these vigilant to help heal this vigilant threat to the state. So now, under side opposition's world, when you have a failed government, when you have a failed society as a whole, and they do not allow vigilantes, what you ultimately create now is further catastrophe, right? You ultimately create a worse off society simply for the fact that you do not allow people to change what they believe themselves is good. But you don't allow change to happen, you don't allow any reasoning for people to any hope for people entirely, reverse when you have a failed society, and that's when you lose this debate. So let's look at the um long-term short-term scenario, right? On our worst worst case scenario, at the very least, even in the long run, if you are not able to spark change, at the very least, we give people the short term of defense. We give people hope, and at the very least, we help people protect themselves. Whereas on the side opposition, they ultimately have not gave the solution. How are you gonna solve third world countries where governments aren't able to operate, where law enforcement ultimately failures, and under their side, they give no alternative towards law enforcement. Except for the code of conduct, except for the governments, we believe those should never exist in today's society as they have proven themselves to be unjustified and untruthful. And that if you want a society or if you want a world where people do feel safe and people at least have a spark of hope, please side with side government as you give you that hope, unlike side opposition where they ultimately condemn you. Alright, thank you to the government whip. Now I'd like to invite the opposition whip to continue on with opposition speech. For the opposition, I wish to rebut a few following points made by the government side um, on the motion. This house does not support the guarantee. Before summarizing all the points made by the opposition, to give you one clear view why our opposition side does not support vigilante justice. So, first of all, you said vigilante can decide who is wrong and who is right. As my previous speaker has already rebutted, that. It is, what if they decide that it is, it is right to kill people out of revenge? So this point you're making, uh, you made was totally irrelevant. And it, and it also <coughs> makes them a criminal, criminal too. And secondly, it draw, uh, as I said, it draws attention to the problem. This point you're making is totally unnecessary because it also, uh, it draws attention while it also instills fear towards society as my first two speakers has already wanted to your <laughs> point. Right. As and this vigilante, and you said this vigilante has the support of the society and the civil. The point you're making totally clashes what you would you just said because you said uh, what if the civil uh, civilians and society were like too afraid of the vigilante to actually go against them, and then the vigilante does not even care about the society. Uh, do not. They do not care of what they think and they will proceed to do whatever they want. And vigilantes are only are like only one step away from being criminals, as my first speaker has already stated. And fear vigilante, uh, you said vigilante is born by like in a place of fear. And what are you how why do you combat fear by instilling fear? It is doesn't work like that. You do not combat fear by instilling fear in people. That is just confirmation. And it's a, you said act upon society. No, they don't. And that's a very big distinction between vigilante and criminal. And what are the special scenarios that you have you said? And my previous speaker has also said that civilians in society does not believe in law enforcement they do they do or else why do lawyers earn so much money annually and why does law enforcement exist and they are we agree still flaws in some developing countries humans are not perfect but we are 
I don't think I said it. And you said, uh, why the reasonings are justified, therefore, and why do you consider now a vigilante as an occupation? We have already constantly rebutted a few points made by the government side that you did not rebut. Um, under your side, what should people do if they are in a situation where the government is not considering the people? Should they just lay down and accept it? So they should make a stance, but by not being a vigilante, they should do it the right way, like going, making the government a better Okay. If you live in a society where the government actively works to persecute like the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, do you think that telling the government, hey, stop persecuting us, is going to work? It is not going to work. Therefore, they might make a stance that are seeking help from other governments from outside the area. Moving on, I would like to summarize all the points made by myself in honor of the other side of this debate. First, an eye for an eye makes the world black and, 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 and doesn't classify the disease. And, and second point is that you have trust, trust in our government. And, and what, what the anti just makes